talking here. Um, but uh, first of all, how's everything? How are you? Everything's good. Everything is fantastic. I'm really excited to be able to do this. I have to remember to stare at the camera or else we're going to be looking all over the place. To be honest, yeah, I, I'll look around when I'm thinking and stuff like that. And usually yeah. I'm looking at you, which is not at the camera directly. because <laughs> the camera's up there. So it, it messes up a little bit, but it's okay. Um, but cool, man. Awesome. So I'll just say... For everybody who's watching the VOD, people aren't here necessarily. I'll just say so. This is Chad Money Minutes. For anybody who is unfamiliar, um, his his uh, channel will actually be put into. I'll put it in the pinned comment and I'll put it in the description. Um, he is a creator here who has, for the last year, been pumping out content on credit cards. And for those of you who don't know, see, I mean, uh, <laughs> Chad actually started his channel with these very small clips of retirement plans. And, and even some stock videos and whatnot. And they were all pretty much a minute long. And they were all numbered, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And that's kind of how we got to start. Now, <laughs> minutes, exactly. <laughs> and there, there, I was thinking earlier, like, how, how did he get his name, Chad Money Minutes? And I went back and I was like, oh, every video was about a minute long. So it's Chad Money Minutes. Um, but he went from that all the way to amassing about 200,000 views at this point over 2000 subscribers and now is regularly posting maybe three times a week on credit card content on and even trips to Paris, maximizing points to Paris, which we might get into. And his, my, the funniest title of a video I've ever seen, which is my 269th month of the capital one quick silver card, <laughs> which, which I absolutely love. Now I'll just say, before we get into anything, I view Chad, maybe you guys in the community too. I, I view you as almost like, the, the father of the credit card community. <laughs> not, not to put anything on you as the, you know, as, as a father or anything, but that's kind of how I view it. When I, when I see your channel where it's just your face and you're, you're answering maybe questions that people might have, it always mm. thinks like there's maybe there's a, a, a dad talking to me and just giving me advice for the future. So I, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but, um, <laughs> so I like that. So I guess the first thing I, I, I wanted to actually ask you was, well, how did Chad's Money Minutes get started? Why did you start the channel? Who is Chad? You know, what is all that? Well, basically, how it got started, I kind of got to give my wife and my eight-year-old daughter most of the credit because, mm. like, I have a circle of friends and, like, I've always loved talking about money and looking at money from a different view than other people do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like money is power. And a lot of people, because they don't spend with intention, you can't really affect pricing and things like that. So um, basically, my wife was like, you're telling all your friends all this stuff, how to save money. They're not listening. They're doing whatever they want to do. So find someone else to tell. <laughs> so she was like, start a YouTube channel. And I was like, uh, who's going to listen to me? Yeah. So then I was so nervous in front of the camera, like literally my very first video, the very first one I did about um, retaining your Amazon pricing, hmm. um, I, I literally had to have my daughter do it with me. She was a total natural and <laughs> it took me about an hour to film that minute. Video. Wow. I was just like frozen. So really? like she had me started and I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep doing a minute because A, I don't know if I can just talk to this phone. I don't know who's going to listen to me. People have short attention spans. So I guess, you know, YouTube kind of owes me some money because I kind of came up with the <laughs> idea for a short. For yes, <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Hey, they need to break me off a little something. Yes. That's so funny. That is so true. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. All those videos. And it's funny how, how organized you kind of were with just here's one, two, three, four, five video, you know, <laughs> all with, with pretty different topics. The whole story hmm. about that was, is whenever I start something, I like to see it through to the end. That hmm. that's, that's my thing. I'm a, I'm a closer. So if it's not worth finishing for me, it's not worth starting. So from the first time I did a money minute, I said, all right, I'm going to do an hour's worth of money minutes. You hmm. know what I mean? So then that could be the money hour. And then ultimately maybe I'll do a day's worth of money minutes. You know, hmm. I want to keep this going as long as I can to see what's going to happen with it. So um, I figured if I can get to 60 money minutes, getting to 1440 is going to take a little bit, but 
you know, at least somebody could say like, Hey, so that's, that's what actually kept me going. Like it was my hmm. goal, no matter what I did, I wanted to get to minute number 60 so I can call it the money hour. Wow. Huh. That, that is so interesting. interesting. And you now you have to get to well. How close are we to five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred? <laughs> oh man, I wish. I, would I, I think we... I got to like. I think there's like an hour and ten minutes worth of money minutes, and then I sort of more so just in, in the in the in the towards the end I started going towards long form content anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I was into credit cards when I started the channel. It was just about the money minutes because mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like I had enough to talk about, to share about with as far as credit cards go. But that was mm -hmm. my original intention. But the minutes is what did it. That is so interesting. And and to give, uh, you know, your wife and your, your daughter some credit just to because because it's very true for a lot of us who get started on YouTube channels. We we go crazy with with gaining the knowledge and, and doing it for ourselves. And then we want to have everyone else do it. But then we soon find out uh, nobody cares as much as we do. <laughs> At all. My mom yeah. told me yesterday, I watch your channel. I don't know what you're talking about, but I make sure to hit the like button. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. And that's all we need. That's all we need is that like button, some subscribes and we're good. Oh yeah. Um, so that's so interesting. So I didn't think it was that uh, in depth where you actually wanted to get to like 60 money minutes to get to that hour. So where do you think you decided to stop doing the money minutes and then start doing more of the long form. What it was it? People commenting saying, "Hey, we want more." You know, actually, no. the it, The views were really low. It, mm. The thing about it was, is that the information was there. There was no real rewatchability about it. You know what I mean? It wasn't evergreen. Mm. I just was like, "Let me just get this knowledge out." Yeah. And then it started hitting me. I'm interested in a lot of other things. I do like to travel. I do like credit cards. I like saving money. I like, you know, then I started the more than a minute. So then that, hmm. that was another playlist because it was like, you know, like one thing was like I became a notary in Florida. Oh. So like, hey, maybe somebody wants to know how to become a notary. Hmm. So I made a more than a minute about that, like spending habits. I made a more than a minute video about that. And bit by bit, instead of a minute now, maybe five minutes, maybe six minutes until my confidence started to build. And then I was like, you know, let me talk about these credit cards that I'm just massaging. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, let me, let me try that. And then in, in between, I would still put out a money minute here and there. And then when my comfort built, I, I was definitely more so for the long form content. It's, hmm. It's fun for me because now I can really just go and I can look at the camera and I, you know, my confidence is there and, you know, I just, I really started enjoying that. For sure. And you, and you do such a great job. I've, I've always kind of, um, uh, looked at your channel to be like, this is, you know, a very honest take and the, the way you describe things and it, you could tell that you're, even as you're talking to somebody, it's, it's not necessarily rehearsed. Maybe you say it a couple times, but it's it's coming off your head. It's coming from experience, um, you know. Whereas maybe some people are just kind of talking about, you know, and I'm guilty of it, talking about things that I don't, I haven't had experience with yet. You know, certain cards that we don't have and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I, I do appreciate the the way you lay out all the information and, and your you know and your perspective. Um, so you talk about you know having uh, and you love like the points and miles games, like like credit cards and, and maximizing points. Um, did this happen for a long time? Did you, were you, you know, lover of credit cards? Were you traveling a lot on points? No, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest with you, I'm, I'm a, by trade, I'm a medical IT consultant. So I've been mm. traveling for years hmm. and yeah, I build up points here and there. I, I didn't care. I'm just like, let me go do the work. Let me, you know, take care of these kids. Let me keep, keep the house from falling down hmm. and how it all started me and my wife. Once again, she always gets credit for this. She is like my trusted counsel. She's my consigliere. So, <laughs> so it's like we're there. And I'm like, you know what? I'm about to turn 40. I'm I want a metal card. I want to I, I want to do something not like I want to do a thing. <laughs> yeah. So I get this email from Delta. I had a Delta blue card. Hmm. And I get this email from Delta, and they're like, Yeah, you're uh, and this is how you can tell I don't know anything at this point. Yeah, you can upgrade to the Delta Sky Miles Platinum, which 
I should not have done because there was no sign up bonus. But I'm like, right. oh, I'm going to get a metal car. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to spend $250 a year, but I can, you know, whip out mm-hmm. this. Well, if I, if I still had it, wh- yeah. whip out this card. And that's how I got started. And I'm like, oh, you can really get some good benefits, free air tickets and points. And then I started watching YouTube to research just that card. Hmm. And then that's when I got introduced to the entire community. Wow. And how long ago was that? That was, that was about November, December of 2021. Oh, wow. So, so really not that long. Not very long <laughs> at all. Because my credit history was long. And at one point, and I actually have videos that I'm coming out, uh, my series called Credit Confessions, hmm. is... Um, I've made some horrible credit mistakes. At one point, I think my credit score, and this is being very generous, it was about a 17. I think it had got that low. It was horrendous. I couldn't buy toilet paper on credit. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, for years. I never used credit cards. I stopped using them. I was cash only for years. Not like Dave Ramsey cash only, like poor working day-to-day cash only. Jeez. And I rebuilt my credit. I bought my house. And yeah, now I'm here. Now I'm like, I'm in full bore. Wow. So you know what? This leads me to, to think, you know, we got to get maybe the whole story. <laughs> so so we oh, know yeah. where you are now. And now you're, you're telling me at one point, maybe you had you know, a little credit score and stuff like that. And, and you were able to turn that around. But maybe can I ask, you know, who were you maybe about 20 years ago? You know, someone in their early 20s, who was Chad and maybe what were you doing at that time in regards to money? Did you have any handle on it whatsoever or? Not even a little bit. My Hmm. handle on money was getting my paycheck every two weeks. Other than Hmm. that, I was hitting the clubs with my friends. I had credit cards. It was free money. At the time, (laughs) I think I was driving a, uh, what was that driving? I think I was driving like an Acura Integra. Hmm. So Fast and the Furious was out. So of course now I was a pseudo racer and I was going to go ahead and, you know, get my 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 walloping 180 horsepower to scare everything else <laughs> off the road yeah yeah it was i was a, i was a mess i was really a mess i had no handle on money whatsoever if my job didn't put anything away for me it was hey yolo <laughs> you know what i mean right it was it was, it was really bad it was which is mm-hmm. was yeah which bad. is much like a lot of us you know a lot of us who you know maybe we didn't necessarily I and mean, that's why i think youtube is a great um not resource, but almost like just a, a library to consult for today's generation. To, I mean, everything I've ever learned in life was from YouTube. It wasn't really from anything else. And then just going yeah, and doing university. it yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what made my sister call it. Yeah. So it's like if you didn't have that, I mean, it's like most parents don't necessarily know how to handle money. Schools are not teaching how to handle money. So obviously, we don't know how to handle money. Um, yeah. So... You know, that that's so crazy. And what were you working at that time, can I ask? Um, 20 years ago was 2003. I think I was working at a call center. It was right before I started working for the prison system and, like, hmm. really deciding to get a house and really, like, trying to be mature. But I just had a, a basic job. It was nothing. I think I made, like, 11 bucks an hour and... You know, it was it was just like whatever. I was just like just blowing through life. It was, uh, uh, it, was it was bad because I, I come from an immigrant family. I'm first generation American. My family, um, half of my family's from South Carolina, the other half's from Jamaica. Oh. And one thing that my mom always told me: save money, save money, save money. Always had a savings account, had a little savings socked away. But other than that, credit was never really a. Th- Thing. It was like the devil. Oh, if you get a credit card, you're going to go into debt. You're going to go into debt. So, um, you know, I just had to learn the hard way, the really hard way. And now I'm good now. Better. Yeah. <laughs> well, you seem like you're doing well. <laughs> you're sitting in a Tesla right now. So it's looking oh, good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, if anyone noticed, we both are. We're not in the same. Yeah. I, I wish I could just switch the camera and there he is. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right I mean, as show. far as they know, I might be sitting right next to you. I think you have the same color. You have white, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Team white. <laughs> mm, that's it. That's it. I named that's mine the, the, uh, <laughs> the white walker. I was really? really into Game of Thrones when I got it. Yeah. You, gotta, you have to have the blue headlights on the front, too. <laughs> you should oh. probably... Yeah, that would look nice. 
Hmm. <laughs> Something to think about. <laughs> yes. I, I mine's named Marshmallow, but from my fiance. But I, I adopted it as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. And I and from what I understand, because I, you know, we've talked off camera and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. At that time you were in New York, right? No, no, I was in Florida. I've been in Florida oh. forever. Really? For a long time I've been here. I came here when I was 10. I came on vacation. Oh. And then I ended up staying and my my mom and my sister, they worked it out and I ended up staying. But I was always back in New York so often. Hmm. I still have a lot of influence from there. And it wasn't until I became like 18, 19, 20 that I even stayed a full year in Florida, like physically did not go back to New York. Huh. It was, uh, so like I still have a pretty decent connection. I still have family in Brooklyn. So, you hmm. know. It is, it is what it is. But yeah, I was down here in Florida. Gotcha. Um, interesting. Huh. So yeah, okay. Cause he, it's funny. Cause we, I, I figured we were in a similar situation where we, I'm from New York and I've been there my whole life. And up until a year ago, I moved down to South Carolina. So it's interesting to see that you have, uh, some family ties, uh, to South Carolina as well. Yeah. Um, and we were thinking about going down to Florida too, but never ended up, uh, coming. It was a nice middle ground, South Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, you get seasons and stuff up there. I think South Carolina is nice. Like, my family's in the upcountry, like, right on the border of North and South Carolina. So hmm. I've been there a few times, and, yeah, it's nice. I always enjoy it. For sure. Um, how did you get started, or even when did you get started in the whole medical consultant gig? Well, um, when me and my wife were dating, we were talking about it. She does it as well. Oh. And um, I, was, I, was, I was doing tech work for AT&T. I was a tech for AT&T hmm. and then, um, you know, I kind of segued into it because, you know, she thought it would be a great thing and she's really, she's super smart. And, um, that's how, that's pretty much how I got into it. I took a chance and I was like, all right, you know, let me, let me give it a shot because it took me a million years to get my degree. Cause all the partying and stuff like that. Um, hmm. I said, let me finish that and tried it. And, I've been, I've been doing it ever since. I, I, I like it. It's really, it's good because I can set my schedule. I can spend time with my kids. I can make a livable wage and, you mm-hmm. know, it's what I got to do. Do you, it, what, can you explain like what exactly is that job? Like what do you do on a daily basis? Well, what I do is I go into hospitals all over the country and like your clinicians, your doctors, your nurses, the people who actually take care of you, they have to document everything that you do. So I simply mm-hmm. teach them the software that they use to document Oh, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you see them clickety clacking at a computer, someone, somebody had to train them how to do that. So I would be like right there. I would be at their elbow to make sure, Hey, don't click that. Hey, that's <laughs> going to cost them a lot of money. Hey, no, they're not deceased. They're still alive. Oh, don't wow. Click, don't click that button. You know, and it, it, get, it can get crazy. You get, you get some crazies. Really? Cause yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what's the, well, what's the worst case scenario with doing that? Because if you're over their shoulder, but I'm guessing when you're not there, then what might happen? Like, oh, who trained you? And <laughs> maybe they call you up. Yeah, if somebody goes off the reservation now. You know, you got a guy getting charged for a hysterectomy because somebody put the wrong code in. You know uh, what I mean? You don't you, uh, you don't you don't want that. And if somebody hits a misclick, there, you know, there are a couple of medicines, there are a couple of letters different between an antidepressant and a stomach laxative you know you know what i mean just as an example yeah. like all this stuff really matters so um i when i go out i'm doing i do 12 hours a day every hmm. day like i actually work prisma healthcare down in uh over in columbia oh. i worked there at the beginning of 2022 so i've been to like i've been to 41 states wow 41 states and mm-hmm. wow that is so crazy and that actually was one of my my thoughts when I was when I was preparing for this was, you know, yeah, I wanted to know how often you are traveling. So it's like, is it every day? You're not every day. You're going to a different state, but maybe every week. No, what it is is that um, I'll set up a job a couple of months in advance, so I'll know where I'm going for two or three mm. weeks out of that month, yeah. and then I will shoot out, get there, get it done, and essentially I'm since I'm a consultant, it's a contract. And when it's done, I'm back home. Hmm. And then I do some consulting work here. So 
Oh, that's I'm good. Work. I'm gonna work. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Really? Is it seven like seven days a week? You're doing twelve hours a day? Yeah. On a contract? Really? Yeah, we, I I call it uh, rolling eighty four. I roll eighty hmm. fours every week. It's not worth it for me if I can't roll eighty four. Wow. So I'll do twelve hours. I'll come back. I may do some YouTube stuff. I might play some PlayStation. Then I get some <laughs> sleep. I go to work. I uh, I might do outlines or research on the downtime when I'm at work. But it's it's yeah. That's why that 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 was the reason for all the hotel rooms and everybody thinking I was homeless when I first started my channel. <laughs> Don't worry, they think I'm homeless too. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh man, that is so funny. But that's that's pretty wild, man. You really you really are. Like working insane, insane hours every single. So you must, there must be some saving grace to the job. You must have some care and love to do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. I I, I absolutely do. And it's like some of the people that you meet, like I, I was just in Cleveland two days ago. I just came back s- Saturday. Hmm. Yeah. I was up there for three weeks and they were so nice. They were so inviting. And it's like, you get people, they treat you like family. Hmm. You know what I mean? There's a little discomfort at first. Cause you know, you got the strange person in your midst, but it's like when they accept you, they accept you. And then sometimes they don't accept you. <laughs> and then, really? Oh, you feel every minute, every single minute. <laughs> every single money minute yeah wow. it takes an hour for it, it takes a year for a week to go by it's 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 pretty bad why do you think that is for certain places it all depends on what it is that they're trying to do or what what purpose they think you're there for like hmm. some of them think that um I'm, I'm a plant from administration to get people in trouble or oh. what have you and you know in some cases it could be any reason you have um a lot of women and it's just some of them aren't comfortable with a guy in their midst and hmm. you, you know what i mean and yeah, it's just a lot of things and a lot of times like in some communities they are so close-knit like half of them are related so oh. like it's it's crazy huh yeah, I can imagine there's a lot of stuff that you'd you'd have to develop just to be able to do the job. Like people skills, okay, am I standing too close to this person? Do they feel exactly. awkward around me? Do I need to be over their shoulder? <laughs> That's yeah, that must be Yeah, you gotta get yeah. people. You mm-hmm. have to get people. Because some people they want you to hold their hand the whole time and other people are just like, Tell me once and if I get into trouble, just be available. Makes you know sense. What I mean? So yeah. Huh. Just work out however you can. So, so one thing that came into my mind was for, for these forty-one states and how often you're traveling, they're paying all these hotel rooms. Yes, yeah, that's a part that I work in on my contract. So, mm. in some cases, depending on the company, though, I may or may not get the points. But mm. most of the time, I get the points. So, I'll put my rewards number on it. And yeah. my contracting company, they'll have a corporate account. I get the points. They get the bill. That works out well for me. <laughs> that's what, see, that's where I wanted to get into. So I <laughs> wanted to know, <laughs> because I actually did a very similar thing. When I used to work for a driving school, I would put all of my gas money that was reimbursed by the company on my credit card. So I would get all the gas, all the points for spending money on the gas, so all those good multipliers. They take the bill when I was a little bit richer. So, so, so you were doing the same thing just on a greater scale with hotels, um, and flights, and flights, and flights. Oh, man, because so, sometimes yeah. I can book the flight and they'll reimburse me. Other times it'll be a direct bill, but my award number is always on there. Wow. Yeah, I gotta have that. Is, is I mean, there other, <laughs> exactly? <laughs> you know. We'll, we'll give, yeah. Are there any um, properties that they choose over others? Like you can't go to a Marriott or they only pay for Hilton's? I mean, for them, it's whatever their choice is. I've been put up at a Hyatt. Um, I worked in Milwaukee and I was at a Hyatt. Um, I've been Hilton, Marriott. Oh, wow. Give me one second. Let me see. What time is it? Okay. 340. We can actually take this on the road, too, because I may have to have Miss Money Minute jump in, take her to get her car. (laughs) Hey man, it's like if you need to end, that's okay. No, no, there's no need to okay. end. See, cool, that's cool. the whole thing. I, I'm like super transparent about what I got going on, and yes. I, I try to work this in with my life, especially with the four kids and mm. so on and so forth. And uh, I like to include them, 
and mm-hmm. it's it's just great. I'm just saying, I have no problems yes. with this thing on the road, and we can we can chop it up. <laughs> <laughs> Got the mobile station. I love it. I'm so excited, man. This is I just this is just absolutely awesome to do. No, I'm, I'm very happy you're, you're you're doing it too. Um, would you happen to know how many points that you've accumulated just from putting your rewards number in for all these hotels and flights? That would be wild. A conservative estimate since 2018, maybe about four million. Oh my God. All the way around. Because <laughs> I got a ton of Hilton points, and then that got messed up. I got a ton of Delta points. I and Marriott was like the big one, in addition to my personal spend, in addition yeah. to my flights and credit cards. Yeah, because before I was in the points and miles game, like I was like blowing Hilton points on Amazon just to get free stuff. It was oh, no, it was sick. Oh, that if is I sick. knew then what I knew now, like I was just blowing points. I just had them. It's just like it's whatever. Wow, that is so crazy. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, that's a good good point about you know even starting the YouTube channels. You learn all the by making videos. You learn all the different ways you can redeem points for a little more value. Um, and we're always constantly learning those 4 million points. I mean, even at just one cent per point, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a good amount of money, man. Just for, <laughs> that's, that's like your bonus at the end of the year. Good. You know, four grand. If I did the math, right. <laughs> that's, that's insane. That's really insane, man. People got to get into medical consulting. Oh, <laughs> it's just, it, the, the downside is that here's the thing. The funny thing is I'm really a homebody. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I like sleeping. I like my own stuff and this and that and whatever. So sometimes it, you know, starts to wear on me a little bit. But I mean, it's it's a decent job. It's definitely it's definitely decent. Yeah. Well, being away from home, I'm sure is is tough. Yeah. You know. But you know, at least we have FaceTime and, and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, how many days a year do you think you're traveling? Then or Actually, away from home? Because I work eighty four hours. I don't have to work as much. So Mm. in two weeks, I do a month's worth of work that most people do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's no days off. There's no time off. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the years, I only worked 17 weeks out of the year. So that's about, that's like a quarter. Yeah, that really is. Oh, I see. It was crazy. I think my... uh, I think my yeah, I think my sound just switched. Just give me one second. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not bad if it's, it's uh, good. yeah, it's okay. Right. It's a little more echoey, but it's uh, it's not bad. Um, wow. So that that's pretty wild. Um, have you in, in all those all those times traveling to different hotels and stuff? I'm sure you've seen a lot. Have you uh, have you seen any? Have you had any crazy experiences or even just good experiences of traveling and hitting all these hotels? Actually, when I was in Columbus, there was, um, I was in Columbus and there was an issue in a hotel that we literally was like, somebody might need to call the police. Really? Like this drunk couple, they were slipping and sliding all through the lobby. Then they got on the elevator and out of nowhere, they just came out of the pool. So they were dripping water all over the place. (laughs) And I swear from a standing stop, these people were bouncing on their craniums into the hotel. It was a a mess. It was a hot mess. And then there, (sighs) um, I had bed bug experiences. I seen, I saw people just get lit up by bed bugs in some of these hotels. And wow craziness um i was a supervisor and i think a young lady jumped in the pool with all her clothes on because her meds weren't right right yeah it it gets to be a bit much jeez i can imagine and and that's one thing that that my fiance and i've always done um when we went to new hotels no matter if it was five star one star it doesn't matter we always first thing we do is we don't even put the bags on the bed. We lift the bed up and we make sure there's no like uh, blood spots in cases like bed bugs and stuff, and they weren't able to be treated or nobody knew about them. So we lift that whole bed up. We lift all the sheets up. We look at the pillows to see if there's any blood spots, and if there's no blood spots, we're good. We could lay on the bed. Yeah, blood <laughs> is a common thing. You get that mm-hmm. a lot on towels and sheets, and blood is very common if you stay in yeah. the hotels. Yeah. 
And of course, all the towels are white. <laughs> I'm going to invite the missus in, and I'm going to take her. Hey, come on. Let's go. Jump in. Mrs. Mrs. Minute. Okay. Yeah, she's going to jump in in a minute. So, yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm very in, I'm very informal. And I, as you can see, I'm like ready to go, ready for anything. And that's I how it. I do my videos as well. That's why I never script anything. And like when I hear pe about people scripting, I'm just like, oh, man, bless you. I it's know. just... It's like whatever happens, happens. Let me just write down some bullet points and let's see what's going on. Let's see how many times I repeat it and then I'll cut it out in editing. Right. No, that's exactly the way I've done it. I, I only scripted for the first couple months and then after that I said, screw like your style. Just say, I can't waste my time scripting. I don't know. I, I felt way more natural and jokes came more naturally if you just just say Absolutely. what's on your mind at that time. Sometimes you miss some information, albeit mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been attacked for missing things or being wrong about things, but at least it was authentic. It <laughs> they'll be okay yeah, it's not exactly the you know right. what i mean hmm. um did you even so, plug the charging cable i'm sorry go ahead yeah so that's that's pretty wild and i know you uh for your whole um youtube setup for when you're actually in all these hotels i know i understand you carry a gigantic light around with you right i actually have two soft boxes but everything condenses into a carrying case about about three foot long four and four by four. So everything actually fits right into a suitcase. And mm. then I just set everything up when I get there. So you yeah. would never know if you see me going through an airport that I have two soft boxes, a camera, a camera mount, um, my camera, my lenses, all that stuff goes with me. That's wild. Yeah. I've, I saw in one of your videos showing the, the, uh, the actual setup a little bit ago. And I saw you put like, cause those blinds are great for just blocking out any lights and those That's it. blackout lights and, uh, or blackout blinds in the, um, in the hotels and then you set your own lights up. It's pretty interesting. It's, uh, yeah, I just clip up, I just clip up, set up and shoot. Cause I used to just bring my cell phone and a, um, I used to just bring my cell phone and a camera mount and that was it. And then hmm. I just worked it out from there. So you're going to see me start moving now, but you know, we're still going to be live. Sounds good. We're doing live. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're doing this. So love it. See sunny Florida going around and around. It looks beautiful. <laughs> so I guess uh, switching gears just a little bit since we got okay. Mrs. Minute, Mrs. Minute in the car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Minute having some fun. Um, how did you guys like Paris? I understand you went recently. Uh, did you want to answer first? Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All I'm right. Not live, I'm she's, not live ready. she's a little. She's a little shy. No, I loved okay. it. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Everything that they told us it would be like, like that was bad. It wasn't. People are super nice, and the food is next level. It's great. How long and did you guys great. stay there? A week. Yeah, we were we were we were there for a week. Um, and. We took two end days for um, for uh, placement flights, for mm. positioning flights. So we actually flew out of Atlanta, but since we live in South Florida, we spent the day in Atlanta, jumped from there. And then when we came back, it was a direct flight from Paris to Atlanta. And then um, we stayed in Atlanta one night. So all together, we were going for 12, 12, was it 12 10 or 12 days or something like that. Oh, wow. And I'm guessing this was all paid for with uh, points and miles. <laughs> oh yeah, the original plan. We got yeah. married in Vegas, right? Oh, cliche. But we got married in Vegas, and we were there, and they have the, the Hotel Paris. And I was, um, it was October, middle of the night. I'm filming a, um, I'm filming an unboxing at mm. work, being a horrible employee or a horrible contractor, <laughs> and um, I called her because it was around the time Amex did a transfer bonus. Mm. And I called her and I'm like, hey, instead of going to Vegas and seeing the Eiffel Tower at Hotel Paris, how about we go see the real one? So wow. she was a little she was a little skittish at first. I said, I think I can do this. I think I can, you know, work these points. I found the flights. Let let's do it. And once she was with it, I started booking. <laughs> wow 
I just started. I just I just pulled the trigger. I figured it out. I made a couple of mistakes on the way, like the positioning flights. I should have just paid cash for those because I even did those on points. So in all, from Florida to Georgia was five dollars a person. From Atlanta to Paris was five dollars a person. From Paris back to the U.S. was three hundred dollars a person because they charge higher taxes. Mm. And then from Atlanta back to Florida was five dollars a person. Wow. So $315 to get to Paris and back. <laughs> per person, that was it. We looked up the tickets. In, in business class. It was oh. all built to one business class. And um, they were like, it, all in all, we should have spent 20000 20000 Full price, it would have been 20000 cash. Jesus. Yeah, so we got this. So that's like 90, 93%. Savings, yeah, ninety-seven or ninety-three percent of savings yeah. around about, probably around there. Wow. So, do you have advice for anybody watching? Because I'm not even too familiar. I don't fly really ever. I, I'm not too sure. I don't even know what a positioning flight is. Um, maybe explain that a little. Well, all right. So, and and that's definitely something I totally want to get into. Is that once you get into reward travel, it's it's really fast paced because reward space books up and depending on where you live, the reason for a positioning flight is it's much easier to get a flight to Dubai out of JFK airport than it is to get out of Cincinnati. You know what I mean? JFK hmm. has more traffic. They have more airlines going there. So sometimes you may have to reposition to an absolutely major airport. Like we have, we have Miami here. So Miami's about an hour and a half away from me, but in Miami, they do mainly South America, Caribbean. They're really good for that, but you do hmm. get some Europe flights and such and whatnot. I wouldn't go to Asia out of Miami, but you can, but hmm. if you're going anywhere in the Caribbean, the greater, the lesser Antilles, Northern South America, Chile, Mexico, Miami's a good place to fly out of. Whereas hmm. Europe you probably want to go to Atlanta. You want to go to New York, Houston, or um, Chicago is also hmm. fairly decent. And do you have any recommended like uh, airlines to get to maybe Europe? Delta is just, I'm a Delta loyalist, Oh, but I want to try out, way to fly is Delta. I want to try out all the hard products, but I'm just a Delta loyalist. So Delta one has been great. I'm interested in going to Switzerland via Swiss air. Oh. And I definitely want to do Singapore, Singapore air, the sweets. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can record a whole money minute, just laying down and getting a massage, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. No. I definitely want to try all of these things. But um, yeah, we're Delta loyalists. Domestically, we just fly Delta. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Calby, we know Calby in the community. He's he's been converting me and on um, everything, going to Hyatts instead of Hiltons and doing Delta instead of everyone else. So, I always like to learn Hyatt a little bit best. more. Yes. Hyatt is the best. Mm -hmm. I um I actually got a video. I have a video that I'm working on now. Because I recently got, um, I kicked 524 in the teeth again, and I got the Hyatt business card. Wow. So um, I went and reviewed the Hyatt, and I'm going to be dropping that video. I just don't know when. My release schedule is a little crazy, but um, but yeah, I got a video coming out for it. It's just a better hotel. Good, nice, large rooms, not very expensive, and the points redemption values are sick. Insane. It's literally like uh, there is no other option for me now. It's like I have we have a combined like a, a good amount of Hilton points, but I'm like, man, why are we going to use this? We have so many chase points that we can then transfer to Hyatt hotels. I mean, we're going to Nashville twice in the next like few months. Total out of pocket points for for like I guess uh, about a week and a half worth is only about forty thousand Hyatt points. It's like nothing. <laughs> It's, and that's yeah. like, you know, and the equivalent would be like $400 in value if you value like one cent per point. Whereas normally you book that with cash. I mean, forget it. That's, uh, you know, that could be thousands, you know, $3,000, something like that. So absolutely. <sighs> I literally just, it, it's funny. I literally just looked at um, hotels in Frankfurt, Germany. Huh. I think it was 30, the, the Hyatt place at the airport is like 3,500 points a night. 
Oh my god. And that's for a king deluxe room. So I looked up the cash price and I think the point redemption value is like three, three and a half cents a point. Jeez. For, yeah. Like you just can't beat Hyatt. They just don't have the footprint of the other places, but you, you can't beat it. Yeah. And They're now that we got a great product. Yeah. And now we're hearing that they're going to be devaluing the, uh, the points on certain properties. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I have this attitude. I'm going to ride it until the wheels fall off. You right. know what I mean? And it's like, if I got three out of the four, we're going to go a little slower. But <laughs> it's still all gas, no brakes. Exactly. At least we're getting, we're still accumulating millions of points. So we can. What are you going to do? What yeah. can you do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, one yeah. thing you could do is if they're going to be devalued, I think in a few days, just start booking your your trips now. Just book, just that book all. Do. <laughs> yeah. sure just do it now. You can lock it in. Oh yeah. You can and, lock it right in. And I understand we are going to be going to uh, Vegas um, for the whole creator okay. meetup. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be going. Yeah. My only thing is I <laughs> is I I. Man, I don't want to spoil anything, but I keep getting denied a certain car, and the video is going to be coming out in a couple of days, um, wow. and uh, and that would be my free flight over there. So I'm trying to figure out different ways, like the business version of it, and maybe you know, because mm-hmm. I don't want to have to transfer Amex points to this particular airline, and this but this way I can get down to Vegas. But I might have yeah. to. But I actually, oddly enough, we um, we booked a. Uh, Never mind. I don't even want to say that. It's going to be great. Okay. It's you know going to be great. I, I can find out about it later. Oh, it's going to be. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's what, what, what we did was amazing. And it's going to be a great video. And it's something that everyone knows in the community, but has never done. So <laughs> you'll see. Awesome. I'm so I'm excited. But, but Vegas is going to be great. You know, Vegas is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really um, looking forward to it. I got a flight out of Miami for 19,000 American Airlines points hmm. that I didn't even know I had. Because... <laughs> Once I realized I had them, yeah, it's American. Ah, I hate American, but it was really? great. <laughs> you know what I mean? To hell great. yeah, yeah. If you weren't even uh, aware of it at that time, that's that's amazing. Um, wow. So, it, has there any been other, you know, with all of your points that you've accumulated over the years, any other amazing trips other than Paris that you were able to go to? Like, how many different countries have you been to? I have been to. Seven or eight, hmm. or nine countries. I don't, I don't remember. I haven't really done any aspirational travel outside of Paris that hmm. I've used points for. Everything else has been like family stuff, or um, I've been married before. I did a honeymoon, you know, you know, stuff like that. But nothing really aspirational outside of Paris, which was like a bucket list thing. Like now, the missus wants to go to Rome, but. I, I don't really do. I'm not going to just do Rome. Let's land somewhere else. Let's take a train because that's what I discovered over there was trains. Hmm. The trains are amazing. Really? So like the train from Paris to London, two and a half hours, you're there. You're doing 180 uh, across the French countryside. And it's like you're doing 40 in a Honda Civic. Like you don't even feel it. Wow. I didn't feel it at all. It's full Wi-Fi. I was doing YouTube editing the whole time I was on the train. It, it, it It's amazing. So it's like, you know, if I land in another country, maybe we take the train into Rome, see some of the countryside, do some stop-offs. But I have some plans, but I haven't done any other aspirational stuff with points. Interesting. Huh. I mean, that's what I hear, too, for people that go there. It's like, get there with the flight. Okay. Pay the money up front to get there with the flight. But once you're there, it should be fairly cheap just to train from country to country. And they're all pretty close from what I understand. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, and like you have the high speed ones and I mean, I don't think they approach the speeds that the bullet trains in Japan do. Cause I think they're over 200 miles per hour. If, hmm. and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but like this one that I was on went 180. It's 300 kilometers per hour. And I mean, we were, we were moving. Wow. We were moving and boom, all of a sudden we're in jolly old England. Wow. Oh, so you did, you did go travel around when you were in Paris, uh, not just Paris. Yeah. Yeah. In Paris, we took the train over to London and we had a day trip and Hmm. we saw the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. We saw a big Ben. It was, it was really cool. It was, it was really cool. 
That's awesome. That's uh, you know a dream that I, I would like to uh, head out there at some point in the future. I'm telling hmm. you, man. Wait till they have one of these transfer bonuses and make it happen. Because I thought that um, with a transfer bonus, you know, I figured that maybe the issuer and or the tra- travel partner would be keen on that and they would like bump up the um, points redemption cost and it wasn't really bad. Hmm. It wasn't bad at all. So I, I, I'm t- just do it. Just do it. Just say it and just do it. Make sure you have your passports. Make sure you go somewhere that doesn't require COVID testing and just do it. Because hmm. some places are still kind of stringent on it, yeah. But um, others, yeah, it's it's wide open. Wow. Hmm. So, what do you say to those people? A lot of us in the community, myself included, like to hoard our points. We like to, you know, get get hundreds of thousands of points. Sometimes people have millions of points, never end up using it, never end up traveling because we just love to see that that pile, just stockpile, just go up higher and higher. What do you say to those people that aren't really using their points? You know, and just yeah, I don't not hold living. A point more than a year. Hmm. I don't hold a point more than a year. I don't. I don't care what it is because, just like we were talking about earlier, there's devaluation. Inflation is a thing. It's a real thing that is just. It's just a part of life. So if it affects regular currency, it's going to affect points currencies as well. So for me, my points in twenty. 2022 uh, they're not going to give me the same value in 2023 that's hmm. just that's just what it is so if you can't travel just take the cash if you don't want the cash hmm. first of all something's wrong with you and secondly you can donate the cash but don't hold <laughs> more than at that point it's a diminishing return and the whole point the whole idea of getting points is to fight the inflation when you're spending your dollars. Hmm. So that's so interesting. You're actually relating almost like, yeah, inflation to devaluing your cash <laughs> to the same thing, devaluing your points as well for the future, that's which it. is very true. Hmm. Cause when, the, um, when the, per, when the, when the um, vendors started taking away like uh, points calendars and going to dynamic pricing, that then put all the power in their hands to decide what a point is. And like literally in real time, they could decide what a point is. So like mm. um, Luke from Luke Points and Miles just went to uh, Savannah where they have yeah. this huge um, St. Paddy's Day thing. So now mm-hmm. with dynamic pricing, my 3,500 point a night room, I'm going to jack that up to 15,000 points a night because even though it's not real cash, somebody might spend using this and you know what I mean? To get yeah. there. Yeah. I don't want that. No, I don't keep a point more than a year. And if I, if I find, I don't want to keep a point more than a year. And if I find that I am, I spend it on something. Hmm. I do something with it. Do you kind of relate that to almost like a philosophy on life? Like maybe there is the logical side where your, your value is going to be considerably Less over time, because that's just the yeah, way the world shout works. Out Sledge. Mr. Sledge. <laughs> <laughs> Sledge. Sledge always has to get the shout out. Um, uh, so, so do you take that philosophy for, for other areas of life? Like, do you keep money in, uh, you know, like a bank account or do you like to invest? I, I'm big on investing. Hmm. I, I keep limited funds liquid because it paper money it's good for buying lotto and tipping people but for the i mean for the most part i like to have my money working constantly it never needs a break doesn't take a day off and it's moving in some market or the other so yeah. i'm a huge fan of investing mainly stock investing uh options trading and that i always want my money working so i don't i don't keep a ton of liquid cash hmm and I and we know this a little bit by looking at you know a few videos on your channel. You, you've you've gone over like the basics of of stocks and how to read a, a stock ticker and 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 some yeah. other things, retirement accounts. Um, what would you say? So you always like to have your money kind of doing something. Do you have a percentage of your portfolio that you dedicate to just stocks? Do you, do you keep it all in uh, maybe index funds or de- how much of your portfolio are you doing in options? Like, what are your thoughts on that? The lion's share, about 80% is stocks. 
80 to 85 percent is individual stocks because I'm into technical research. So I mm. literally I have a notebook where I have um, just pages and pages, return on invested capital, return on assets, like trends that I follow, MACD charts that I've actually redrawn for specific um, for specific periods. Mm. And I like breaking down the numbers of a company. I'll read a 10 K like it's a romance novel. You know what yep. I mean? I, I, yep. I like doing that. So I actually am inclined to pick individual stocks, but I do have some ETFs and some index funds that I also keep, you know, cause I like dividends as well. I haven't hmm. put out the series about how to get dividends once a week, every week, forever. And that's just individual stocks just based on the payout schedule. Yeah. And these are stocks that are not like, um, uh, Ronnie's frisbee, frisbee <laughs> darts. You know what I mean? Like right. these are actual companies that are they're here forever, right? Ish, right? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> we'll see what technology does. And gets yeah. rid of the, uh, you know, some of these companies. Yeah. Um, could you say specifically any stocks that you're interested in at the moment? Coca Cola. I always hmm. like Coca Cola. I'm a big believer in Coca Cola because. A, they have their hands in everything. I, I like mm. defensive stocks and staple stocks, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, because um, people always got to eat, always. And I've been big on energy lately. Mm. Energy. The um the segue that I'm seeing like in the just 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 period, like right now, like all the cars. That, Every manufacturer you hear, they want to go electric by such and such a time and this and that, whatever. Energy is the way to go. And even if the oil sector takes a hit by not getting a bunch of cars, what it takes to refine a lithium battery, it, the money's going to come. And energy is just where it's at. Mm -hmm. I, that's just my thing. I like energy. Gotcha. Any particular companies in mind? Um, <laughs> just looking uh, around hmm. uh, I have investments in Dominion hmm. Dominion, Duke Next Era and I think I own stock in another another one, I don't remember without actually looking at it oh wow, so, so you're, yeah, you're actually investing in like the I guess you would call it in the the uh in the picking industry so the ones that are mining the gold the ones that are actually going to be out there yeah. servicing all this energy so you're not yeah. interested in like any you know maybe like a tesla or like a, a charge I point holdings, i got holdings in both of those companies really i don't stock hmm. in both of them i do when um yeah. after volkswagen got caught misbehaving mm. and electrify america Inked a deal with Walmart, started putting all their stuff in Walmart parking lots. ChargePoint came up in tandem with Tesla. And I bought Tesla before their split in 20, what was that? 2020? 2020? It was right when I got this car. Like this car is actually, the Tesla stock paid for this car. People swear I'm rich. No, it's just prudent <laughs> investing. I yes. invested before yeah. they split. There was the run up. I sold, you know, I did a little arbitrage. Boom. Sold Tesla to buy a Tesla. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Was it the smartest move? Not exactly, because the money I put on this car probably would be more now, given the split and split adjusted their equity. Yeah, it might be. But I, I, I invested all that stuff like i had my hands in everything at one time my portfolio ballooned to almost like a hundred different firms i was invested in wow then i collapsed huh. it down just to make it easier to manage but i like individual stocks i like it it's it's fun for me and, and you know a lot of people are and i've had some some live streams where we talked about stocks and you know in the credit card community people are pretty diverse you know obviously they don't just love credit cards but most of the time i find that they're interested in stocks, but usually a little bit afraid of it. Um, it seems a little less concrete than like a credit cards or a real estate. And I, and I try to say to people like exactly how you said, you know, you read the 10 K's like it's a romance novel, you know, like, yeah, I love them. 
this is going through the whole financial report, looking at the balance sheets to see what's their net income, how much money do they have on hand, you know, all this stuff, just to see how healthy a company is. And yeah. in, in, in doing that, it might seem risky on the outside, but it's only risky if you're unaware of what the company is actually doing. If I just go and buy, like I couldn't buy a Coca-Cola because I know nothing about their profit. I, I know nothing about the company. I don't know how much cash they have in reserves. So I would say that would be a gamble for me, even though it's like a very stable stock. But Tesla, I happen to know very well. That I read uh, every financial report. I'm on every earnings call. So I, it's only only in the ignorance or only in the unawareness is it scary, <laughs> you know? So I think that's a good message. As you say, you're, you're invested in maybe at one point, a hundred different companies. It's hard to be an expert in all of them, but at least you're aware of all of them, you know, and you're, yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, um, Warren Buffett, Benjamin Graham, you know what I mean? I, I have the intelligent investor. I have the audio book and the hardbound book. I, hmm. I'm a big believer in buying a dollar for 50 cents. I'm a long holder. You know what I mean? So if I'm not going to own it five, 10 years, it's not worth owning five or 10 minutes. It just, it just isn't. Mm. And then really, and truly when I research a company, if I really like them, I'm not researching it to substantiate why I like the company. I'm researching it because I want to find every reason why I should not buy this company that mm. emotionally I really like. The technicals and the emotion have to match. So it's like, if I really like a company, I want to invest, but the technicals are telling me no, I got to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Very true. I, I got I to walk away from it. And I've walked away from a couple of things and it's just like some I've been right on and others not so much, but it is what it is. It yeah. just didn't look good to me. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a good lesson for a lot of people. A lot of people want to hold on to what they love, <laughs> you know, know, as long as possible. Um, but, uh, you know, it, sometimes it, it, it does take just realizing you might have been wrong in your initial thesis. This company is not as great as I thought it was on, on a fundamental yeah. scale, you know, and then now I have to unfortunately let it go. So this way I can, I could prosper. Um, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Um, so I guess just to switch it up a little bit, anybody who's watching right now, I see we've got 14 people in here, start writing some questions in for Chad and, and myself, if you want, but mostly Chad, because he's game right now. So if anyone has some questions, <laughs> somebody has questions, Throw them out there now, and we'll we'll do some Q and A for maybe five ten minutes. Get that out there, um, and then we'll you know we'll we'll see where we go after that. Um, but I guess before that, do you have any aspirations and goals for the future of the YouTube channel? Where do you see that going? Well, um, it's funny that you ask. I'm I'm really just taking it in. I didn't expect it to be what it is. I'm not even going to lie. I just thought it was going to be a hobby. I still remember when I got 10 subscribers. Uh, I still remember when I got 50. I still remember when I got 100. <laughs> like all of that means something to me. And in the, in the fact that people take the time to listen to me and listen to some of the nonsense that I have done. It, I, I love it. it. It's It's one of my highest honors and I really love it. And I want to just keep going. I want to keep, I'm going to review all the cards in my collection. I have a binder. I'm going to review them all. I am going to, uh, I want to do more travel stuff. I want to do some more money minutes as well. Cause that was where it all started. And I've recently gotten into shorts yeah. practicing with shorts and stuff like that so yeah i just want to take it as far as i can I actually want to do a second channel as well hmm. and um i have that in the works i'm just i'm gonna kind of you know lay low on it now hmm. and um probably though around the summer you'll see a second channel come for me and then with this channel i want to do a patreon because um i don't know if anyone knows this about me but i curse like a sailor i used to be uh I used to be an old grizzled prison guard. I used to huh. work in the prison system for the state of Florida, and I have a colorful command of the English language. And I was thinking, like, doing <laughs> a Patreon where I could have, like, uncensored talks about credit and stuff in the community. 
Hmm. So that's my plan as well to go. So I, I got a lot of stuff going on, you know, F bomb here or this, that, whatever. Sometimes it's like people just want to say that they just want to get that off their chest and understand that somebody else understands it. Like how I feel about capital one and their venture X card. I got emotions, about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't let these emotions fly. Chad's going to start it. throwing hands. Yeah, throwing throwing hands at the Capital One Venture X. That's it, man. Oh Lord, that's that's very interesting. I think that would be very interesting in the community, especially since, uh, you know, maybe there's some questions people. I don't know. It's more of an intimate thing. Uh, not being weird about it, but people can ask you know more intimate questions directly to you instead of just commenting yeah, on whatever absolutely. video you made. Hmm. I like that idea. I think that should be fun. Any ideas of or any uh. Can we get a hint of what this other channel might be? Oh yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's not about credit cards at all. It's it's going to be tied in to credit cards, but um, it's it's going to be a car channel because I'm a big car guy. Hmm. I love cars, and the format. I'm still working out the format. That's why I'm not really putting it out there. So I'm still working out the format of how I'm going to do it. But um, yeah, it's going to be about cars. One of my other passions and. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Hmm. They might you might be able to do a style like uh, Marquise Brownlee's second channel, where he's walking just just his camera, literally raw, and just walking around. People end up loving it. Um, this way, it's very minimal work on your end. You won't have to edit it much, you know. Yeah. Because I I was looking to do a very similar well not not with cars but a second channel, uh, talking about just real estate. So I can but I could talk about my specific market, so I can get some people that buy houses down here. Or so, but I wanted it to be so low maintenance that I could just. Let's just talk. Let me walk downtown, and and, and that's it. You know. Hmm. Yeah, this one, this one, that's that's where I'm, what I'm going with. So yeah, I'm I'm like champing at the bit, but I got you know sign up bonuses I'm working on. I got to make sure the kids are good. Yeah. You know what I mean. And then summertime when everybody's free, you're gonna see the kids. The family is gonna be in it. Everything. I'm 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 really looking forward to it. Wow. Do you have goals for this? Well, for both of your channels to to kind of. Everybody has the dream to have the channel surpass whatever income you're making on your, in your at your day job. Obviously, that would be great. Do you have that always in the back of your head? Or? Yeah, it's it's in the back of my mind. But the reason, like, I don't think it's like my whole thing is: is there are people who devote way more time to this than I do, and I feel as though they should be rewarded more so. Don't get me wrong. If I have a breakout video, if I have like a little streak, that's great. But the sustainability, like I've seen people there, there are channels like, and I'll even name a few people like Spencer Johnson, like Daniel Braun, um, Mark Climale. Uh, mm -hmm. These are people that Luke points and miles. When I join their channels and I sub to their channel, your channel, <laughs> you know what I mean? Stan's, Eric's. <laughs> I'm a big fan of smaller creators, newer creators, and you can see where their work has compounded to mm -hmm. the point where I'm looking and I'm like, I, I got four kids. I got, I got a two and <laughs> three year old. I got, I got to get on this plane. Like my job in California got canceled. That's, you know, that that's why I'm still right. in Florida. I should be in LA right now, hmm. but I got so many things in flux. I can't devote the kind of time to editing and this and that and whatever. And it's just like, I'm not great at it. Everything I've done is just trial and error. Like everything. Hmm. And I mean like everything. You guys had to tell me how to put ads in my own video. Oh, and yeah. literally, <laughs> it's in my game. <laughs> yeah, you're so leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah, like, so it's like, I keep it in the back of my mind. Maybe I say something that's so awesome that everyone shares it with everybody in South Dakota or something. And I get a ton <laughs> of subscribers from that. But as of right now, I just love the connection with people and being able to um, just relate to the people that are out there. Hmm. And I think it's a true testament to the amount of value um, you're providing since, you know, you, you do have a good amount of videos, but a lot of those early days ones, yeah, were short short videos and, and probably not a ton of subscribers from there. So you don't have like a million videos, but you also have just passed 2000 subscribers. So it's like, it seems as if people really love 
your message and the, the way that you present yourself and people hit subscribe maybe at a higher rate than the rest of us um, just because of how maybe authentic you are on camera and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's definitely like your presence as well. So I, and I think the message is heard a little bit stronger um, as opposed to someone like me who's just screaming at the camera, um, <laughs> you know? So I, I, it's definitely kudos to you for sure. Cause you're doing some great Thank work you. and you're, you know, you're working 40, 84 hour weeks and you're still putting stuff out there. So it's, it's uh, impressive. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. Let's see what we got here. I think oh, I can read them to you. Mm -mm -mm. Oh crap. Chad has a Tesla as well. I want to join the Tesla crew says CJ. <laughs> <laughs> sledge down here somewhere in South Florida. Me, him, yeah. and Sledge, we're, we're gonna coordinate something to get to link up. Mm, that's right. Yes, you are all there. That that would be interesting. Oh, I would love to see that. These are great friend of the channel, Cesar Lorenzo. Great guy. I've been talking oh, yeah. for a minute. Cesar's great, and he's a, a true Amex king around these parts. He loves his American Express. Um, CJ said, CJS, which Amex gold card is the best one, Chad? Is it the classic gold or the rose gold? Oh, look, CJ, look, bro. Look, I, I love you, dude. But <laughs> that rose gold business is for the birds. You want to real uh, Amex? <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. Let's that go. I'm pulling it out. Stuff. Mm. <laughs> this is a no bueno. <laughs> Stop it! You can't, you, you can't see mine. This is the back of it, but because I got the new, I got the new uh, Anthony Venture oh, you card. Got the new, oh, Calby, did, did Calby do that one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Aunt Calby did this one. This is what we got now. This is I converted my gold card to the Anthony Venture <laughs> card. <laughs> but that's right, that's CJ. Cool. I mean, it's. The, the classic gold is, is, is just the best. Hey, you know? I love you as a person. You just make poor decisions. <laughs> you, just, you make poor decisions. CJ, it's, it's a sad life you lead, but it's okay. Oh, <laughs> he said he's very disappointed in you. <laughs> I, I can understand. Even Tony covered up the ugly gold because it's so... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, real. Man. No, CJ. It's just there's something better than gold, and it's venture. Mm. Oh, um, man, William Cordero, uh, great guy. He's usually in the streams. He asks, uh, he asks you, Chad, do you think uh, American Express will revamp the Amex every day? I am actually suspicious of them actually revamping the everyday preferred. Hmm. specifically and the reason being is i saw something online i think it was on mark reese's channel where they had some card art that they kind of sprinkled into their website that you know they they try to play coy about oh did we do that but um <laughs> i think they're going to do something and it's on one of the everyday cards i would i would assume that that might be coming huh Interesting. Do you think it'll be like uh, different multipliers and stuff? It, they could add or remove benefits. I mean, I don't know if they would do like what they did with the um with the blue cash, which was like a total revamp. But the reason I'm thinking about that is because with Chase and their um their Freedom Ride was it Freedom Rise or something like that, yeah. And then City with the Strata and like. The, Trust me, they got moles. They are, um, they're definitely keeping their ear to the streets, and I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with something. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't seen yeah, any of that, not, so that's news to me. Get, they're not going to get left behind. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I don't know if we have anybody else. Just got people laughing about the gold card. Uh, I guess Wandering Doc. Coming in, he says, uh, CJ, I'm back in my hometown. Oh, he's, he's talking to CJ, but he's back in his hometown. All of his high school friends drive Teslas. They all at least have one. Oh, wow. And CJ's asking, uh, what do you guys think of the Freedom Rises reward categories will be? I don't uh, know. But I hope 
it has something decent with gas because really and truly gas is a category for personal cards it sucks Mm -hmm. yeah unless you get it on a rotation or a promotion by and large gas category they're just awful (laughs) <laughs> you know you know what I mean? A mm-hmm. lot of people end up getting catch-all cards, and gas tends to influence them. And, I mean, as far as groceries are concerned, you got a c- couple of good options with groceries for cash back and points. Hmm. You know, even if you don't want to pay the 250 Amex, Amex fee, you, you still have some good options cash yeah. back-wise because there's the BCP, there's um, U.S. Bank cards give um, have some good cash back multipliers. Hmm. Uh, you, you got you got some good options there. It's yeah, funny. I, I yeah, <laughs> I saw I saw uh, Caesar coming and saying, knowing Chase, it's probably going to be an online uh, guess <laughs> point yeah. multiplier. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to, I had to break that one. Yeah, you got it, you got Publix where you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's my wife's uh, preferred. We loaded on the Publix app. If you pay for the Publix app in with the Publix app. You put it on your phone and you you scan that at the register. As hmm. long as your preferred, your Chase Sapphire preferred, is tied to your Publix app, that counts as an online grocery purchase, even though you've purchased everything in store. Really? Yeah, that's a, that's a hack that I found out. I was here on a job and I tried it because my wife has a VSP because she's not. 824 like i am so um she was able to get a chase card at least a personal chase card and Mm. so yeah we tried it yeah it works 3x you know what you reminded me you did make a video about this um that's right uh i need to or maybe it was a short i need to do that that's very smart because i do go to Publix and in okota's online grocery wow that's pretty wild if you don't have a gold card you can still get great chase points at 3x a pop yeah, and you can make it happen. And it's not just Publix. It's anywhere where you can pay with the app. As long as you can pay with the app, it's going to code as online grocery. It's almost like um, getting gas at Sam's Club. That doesn't mm. code as a gas station. That's a wholesale purchase. Oh. You know what I mean? Because they own the gas station. Right. Well, they own the app. It's an online It's an online grocery purchase. You think that would work for Target too? I don't know. Because Target isn't a grocery store per se. Mm. True. Yeah. That part I don't know. Hmm. Um, wondering Don asks, uh, wondering Doc asks, "Hey Chad, what's the next credit card you're looking to get?" Honestly, <laughs> I was actually trying to figure that out today. Hmm. I don't know yet. Um, I don't know if I want to try to roll the dice on another Chase business card or. Oof. Or if I want to remix the Amex Legion and maybe, you know, look look at some other offering that they may have I, at this point, I do. I can honestly say I don't know. It, you I know really what? Don't. I'm feeling remiss because one of my points that I have written down was talk about the Chase business cards and how you were able to get approved over 524. <laughs> do you want to run through that real quick if you can? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh. So a um, little background. Um, I've been 824. You know what? Forever. Before you even say anything, to let people know who haven't watched the video, I made a video and I tried to get approved for a Chase Business uh, Income Limited card. And I'm at 524 and I was denied not once, but twice. But Chad here, he's about to say he was able to get approved at like 824. So I go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 824. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, it was November of last year. Yeah, hmm. November of 2022. I was working a job. Where was I? Where was it September? It was September of last year, and I was out in St. Louis. And they sent a mailer to the house before I left. And I'm just like, you know, whatever. Why are you sending me this mailer? I I had recently gotten rejected for a Freedom Flex earlier that year because i didn't even realize what 524 was when um when i was applying for the freedom flex and such i'm like why aren't they giving me these cards i'm awesome and it it just (laughs) that's when i found out about the 524 i realized i was 824 but then when they sent me this mailer with an invitation code i remembered watching that 
oh, hey, targeted mailers sometimes will supersede the 524 rule. Hmm. So I, um, I tried to apply for it. I don't even remember if I recorded the screen. I may have, but I got approved. And I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, okay, so what do I do with this card now? Like, normally this is where I'd start cursing. But um, I get the card. <laughs> right. I hit the sub. And by November, I'm home, working a job at home, go check the mail, and here's another mailer. This time it's for the, not the unlimited, it was for the preferred. Hmm. And this is when they started the 90,000 point thing for the um, unlimited and the cash. Now, mind you, I had already gotten my unlimited at the 75,000 point mark. Hmm. So now the preferred comes along. Okay, you spend 15,000, you get 100,000 points. I'm like, hmm. Where am I going to find 15 G's worth of stuff to spend? On? And then luckily, shout out to my mom. Um, her property taxes were due and they took credit cards. That's great. She's got properties. <laughs> <laughs> it, it literally, it fell right into my lap. So mm-hmm. boom, it's done. That's it, awesome. It, so, and then all of a sudden, um, Luke's points and miles. I think he applied for the chasing cash. I didn't get any more mailers, but I'm sitting at the house, and this was in January, I want to say. I think this was right before I went to Paris, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder. Hmm. You know what? Worst comes worst comes to worst, it's just another inquiry. Eh, I have a I have eleven million of them on my account anyway. I don't care. <laughs> And I applied for the ink cash just to try for the ninety thousand. Boom, I got it. And then I referred the missus, and she got it. Oh my god! Yeah, it was it was crazy. And then um, after that, I got the built card. I got the um. Oof. Then I got the Hyatt card. Mm. I'm getting the Hyatt card in March. Wow. That's yeah. wild. So you ended up accumulating like maybe about five different business cards. Mm-hmm. That's insane. In rapid succession. I think now I'm at, am I at, I'm either at eight or nine. I think one of the cards fell off. I went to seven and now I'm back at 824. Jeez. Are there any uh, interesting ways that you, I'm always looking for new ways. Any interesting ways that you have hit sign up bonuses? Like you say the taxes on your, your, your mother's house. That's great. Um, any other yeah, if you ways? Have relatives and they have big expenditures coming up that they're going to pay cash for, or they don't have a credit card. Yeah. Or even if they do, a lot of the times, oh, I'm not going to pay credit cards, uh, pay that on a credit card because they're going to charge me a fee. The fees are part of doing business. So it's like, hey, look, you have this thing. Oh, you're going to put a new AC in the house. You have the cash. Give me the cash. They charge 3%. Okay, I'll pay that as a thank you. Mm-hmm. Then I'm also going to keep the points. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you got some flights you want to go on and this and that. Oh, you're going here? How about I buy your ticket for you? Just give me the cash. <laughs> yes. Like, you got to be kind of like inventive of that. People think like I have a fulfilling dollars and I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just know that, A, I have two kids in daycare. So first of all, hitting subs is not a problem because – Daycare costs are redonkulous in South Florida. Mm. So that helps. And then in addition to that, I know people who have expenses. I'll pay your expenses. You give me the cash. Yeah. And almost everything except for mortgage, your mortgage will take a credit card now. So you Mm. work out, see if the fee is worth it. If it's a flat fee, pay ahead. You know what I mean? So like if, 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 if you have the water company and they're charging you a percent and a half, right? Mm-hmm. But you have your, you have your, uh, if it's a percent and a half on the first 50 bucks or, you know, just a flat $5 if you use a credit card. Yeah. I'll pay a couple of months of the water bill up and get the 2X points on my Amex Blue Business Plus. Yeah. Anything with a flat fee, pay it ahead. Get the most points you can. Very true. 
a lot of people yeah. don't even realize that they can uh, put their taxes, just their tax bill at the end of each year, for the most part, on a credit card. Um, you know, you, you go through a little bit more. It takes a little extra time. <laughs> it took me yeah. a couple hours to kind of figure it out. But at the end of that, I was able to hit my Amex Platinum retention offer bonus, which was like spend 4K in three months. So I was able to just throw the tax bill on there, a few other things, and then boom, got some, some free value right there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's how you do it, man. Which perfectly ties me into my last question for you, Chad, mm -hmm. which was, do you really ever not leave money on the table? Sir, I never <laughs> intentionally, intentionally leave money on the table. Funny story. Okay. This happened yesterday. <laughs> hmm. I have a talent for finding money in the wild. Hmm. Reason being, um, years ago, I went, I was working at AT&T and I met the guy who's now my Kung Fu instructor. And <laughs> okay. Wow. I, I've been training Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu for uh, over five years. Oh my I God. I love it totally saved my life it, it was just it was amazing at a time that i was really just emotionally in a bad place i come out of his apartment and i'm walking around 20 dollar bill just on the ground hmm. okay i look around nobody's there i pick up 20 uh, me and my wife were taking a walk around the neighborhood like a year or two ago and she's saying something and i just go money and there's money literally <laughs> There's like five bucks just blowing in the gut. <laughs> yeah. We go to uh, my in my uh, my mom's house, twenty dollar bill in the bushes. Oh my god! I promise you, I can't make this stuff up. Just yesterday, I um I came into town super early Saturday morning. So we got up, we were running some errands, you know, doing some adulting, you know, stuff that people with gray hair in their beard do. So um I go there to put a check in for uh, uh, income tax check in mm -hmm. and I'm walking out of the bank laying right there still as can be on the concrete still warm from the Florida sun money <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Show <me>. money money <laughs> $20 bill Chris $20 bill huh. so yeah I don't leave money period I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm the guy who stops and picks up every penny and sees on the ground. Wow. I leave no money on the table ever. That's fantastic. Well, I will say there, we're going to have to do <clears> something <throat> and you, I'm going to say this, but you'll forget it by the time it happens. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to, we're going to have to devise a plan. Now I just had an idea. We're going to put some money on the floor of a casino and see if you will leave that money or take it. Cause you know, if you take that money, that's a felony. <laughs> <sighs> It's technically a felony, and I'm going to do it, and we're going to watch you sweat, and I'm going to record it in the back, and we're just going to leave it there. We're going to show Ch 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 get closer to it. The people in the purple suits and the, the blonde here are going to be right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could, that could be a problem. That could create a kerfuffle. <laughs> we're going to get Chad arrested in Vegas. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's going to be bad. <laughs> Please don't um, do it. <laughs> I won't. No, I'll just we'll forget about it. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Chad, this was absolutely amazing. Um, I love doing this. I feel like there's other stuff that I, I wasn't able to uncover, like 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 you know, uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu and all these things. So we might have to do a part two at some point. Um, <laughs> hey man, I'm with it. You just let me know the where's and the when's, and I'm I'm down. Like awesome. I was actually going to do this from my office at my at my home job here, but hmm. the, the you know we. We have a bond. Yes, this is our this is, our, this is where we live. <laughs> I'm kind of behind from on stage, isn't I? Oh, Mr. Mr. is oh good guy. He's he's always very funny in the chats. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, this was great, man. Mm -hmm. My it wife's was. gonna kill me though because she wanted me to send her the link before we started. Oh, so she could watch. It's okay. We'll watch it again so I can cringe and be like, "God, I'm so corny." <laughs> You're good. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in timestamps and everything. I'll spend the next hour doing that. Um, okay. So this way you can kind of just go along um, and see those parts. Uh, but yeah, this was this was amazing. This was a lot of fun, man. And uh, again, you, thank you for yeah, being here. Definitely send me the link. And by the way, to everybody listening, join this man's Discord. Please do that. It is where you need to be, period. 
I love it. I love, I love everyone being in there and, and, you know, we're all trying to learn pretty much. So we got, we got bullets Absolutely. for everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, um, mm-hmm. I wanted to say yeah. sincerely, and I know I texted you a lot, but thank you so much for having me. This really means the world to me. I didn't think this would get to where it is. I remember meeting you and CJ and Stan um, when you guys were doing a credit series. Mm-hmm. That was a very, it was, I think it was around Christmas. I want to oh, say it was really? around Christmas you guys were doing it. Yeah. Or you might have done another one. I don't remember, but like, that's how I got introduced to your channel. I think you had like two or 300 subscribers at the time. Oh. <laughs> like, I legit remember meeting every single one of you. I remember when Stan uh, crossed a thousand. Yeah. I actually called one of my brothers. I was like, hey, subscribe to this YouTube channel. He doesn't know this, and this is actually exclusive. Uh, my friend was nine ninety nine. Really? Yes. Wow. And before I could hit the button, no, was I already subscribed? I was already subscribed, mm. but I wanted my buddy to be one thousand. He was like nine ninety nine because I kept refreshing it. Because yeah. I called him, I was watching a video, and I was like, "Hey, I need you to subscribe to this guy's channel for me because he's about to hit a thousand. Like, I get excited when I see other people winning. I remember wow. when you hit a thousand. I remember all of that. I remember when Matt hit a thousand. Like, yep. Like I've met some great people here, and I just I'm so grateful to be able to do this and be able to um. You know, just connect with everybody. I met Spencer when he had like a hundred and something subscribers. Wow. You want to say? It was like a hundred. Like, I've seen Spencer from the jump. I really, I'm into small creators because they're just awesome. And then in addition to that, you never know who's going to take a rocket ship. You never know. And like, I give advice to smaller creators that I meet. And it's like, look, I don't care what people are saying. Say what you got to say, because the big guys, if they're smart, they're watching. You know what I mean? And big guys will watch what you do and then they'll just regurgitate it to their legions of fans. It sucks. It's happened to me personally. But Hmm. and I mean, I don't I don't care. But get your take out there. Like, definitely do it. Yeah, I sub to very small channels. And you got some guys out there who are really sharp. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, there's uh, there's Jane Rabbiton, good guy. Met mm-hmm. him. He's out of Texas. Like, and he's, like, on it, man. He really? is on it. Yeah, he's all super good guy. Like, that's just that's just one example. But it's like, I'll never forget my first 10. Yeah. I'll never forget my first 50 ever period whatsoever. So anytime like people like I, I am so honored to be on this show with you because you're, you're one of the people I, I really do respect. I'm like, I respect everybody out there. That's why I try to participate in everything. And, you know, I just, you know, just want to keep it real with everybody. You're amazing, man. That's a, <laughs> that's so great. And the, the love for the community is, is, uh, that you have oh, yeah. is really, it's uh, it's contagious, <laughs> for sure. Great, you know, great human beings. Yeah, and I and I, I I'm with you with that whole championing of people. You know, getting to getting to a thousand. We we were all. I remember when all of us, because when I met all of them, yeah, it was that was that first collab that was back in maybe June or something. Yeah, I was at like a, I think I was at a hundred, hundred subscribers at two hundred. Yeah. And I remember Spencer was at like six, and and Stan was at like four, and. and and uh, Eric, Eric Gow was at maybe 300 at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eric, too. I remember when he hit 1,000. Because mm-hmm. he did the video after that. Like, a little bit after that, what do yeah. I get paid for having this? Man- like, I sincerely watch, like, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I watch a lot of you guys because, like, I'm just, like, in awe. It's like, all right, I'm old enough to be most of their fathers, but, geez, these guys are way smarter than I am. Because they know at 20-something, what I had no clue about. I didn't even know that I didn't know. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. it's like, oh, you guys got the keys to the kingdom. And it's like, I am not so arrogant that I can't learn. You know what mm. I mean? I can learn from you. You guys are killing it, man. I'm just over here like, 
you know, just just sweep some of the scraps <laughs> off the table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't leave any money on the table. Just don't right. leave any money on the table. I won't. I won't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm here for it, man. That's why I'm looking forward to this creator meetup, meet people in person yeah. and stuff. I was up in Cleveland. I almost got sent to Austin. I would have reached out to Spencer. I reached out to Luke. At mm. Luke's points and miles when I was there, but he it was he was going to Savannah, so we didn't get to mm. link up. I see. Like, it was a fun time, man. Yeah, I wanted to um because I'm I'm uh equidistant from you and a few other people. And uh but Florida was is one of those I want to make a trip down, drive down to see CJ and Sledge and, and you. <laughs> so that would be that would be you fun. You say the word and I will come I will I'll meet you wherever. You know, really? I, mean? I think you already know gas won't be an issue. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> if you say words, I will be there. That's awesome. Like no questions asked. We'll have to make that happen then. One of these Absolutely. <laughs> one of these days. Maybe we could all go to Disney and wear Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> you know, I've actually imagined like all of us getting together and then um all of us eating and just seeing the plethora of gold cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. Somebody's saying, Hey, look, I'm trying to hit a sub. And then everybody's like, all right, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Or next three while it's just. Pew, 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 pew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, shoot, <laughs> shoot it out at everybody. Oh, 100%. Yeah, We'd have to take like a video of like uh, House of Cards, but literally, you know, <laughs> with old yeah, gold oh, cards. Oh, that would be epic. <laughs> Although CJ's that's will be on the bottom. Happen. CJ's rose yeah, gold, you know. That rose gold nonsense. Uh, yeah. Uh, love you, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm happy well, my wife wasn't here. She likes her rose gold. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I got her rose gold. But eh, it's okay. No one's perfect. No one's she picks better <laughs> husbands than she picks cards. <laughs> Got it, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, any last uh, words before we sign off? No, man. Just thanks again, man. I, I really, like, sincerely, thanks again. I hope we got all of the um, questions. I appreciate everybody who came through to watch this. Like, just thank you. Thank you. Make sure you guys show love to Anthony Venture. He's just real estate investments like he's he's got what you're looking for this this is the place you want to be remember sign up for his discord i'm sure he's going to link that <laughs> in the uh description as well and i just want to see everybody win that's it i'm, I'm weird like that i want to see everybody win yeah we all do better, you know and actually yeah. enough of plugging me let's plug chad because <laughs> chad's uh, he's uh, it's right in the description. You go in the description, it's Chad's channel. I think Show just subbed, a few people subbed. So get right on Chad's channel, sub because he's got some great content. He's an amazing guy, and obviously a lot of love in his heart. So <laughs> thank you again for being here, man. And uh, absolutely, I guess My I'll pleasure. see you in the comments section, or we'll do this again. <laughs> yeah, bro, anytime. Then I will, I will literally stop what I'm doing and do this. Wow. That's yeah, awesome, man. Like, yeah, people will be all right. I'm, I'm at Walmart. Exactly. Like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's funny. Well, I guess enjoy, man. Have fun for the rest of the day. All right. And uh, I'll all see you. Right, man, you too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to head home and make sure they didn't do a number on my wife's car. And... Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> it's like every time I turn around, it's something. But we're going to get these higher points. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, bro. Mm -hmm. Great to get right, to meet man. you, man. Take it easy, man. Uh, uh, thank once again. Thanks again for having me. Don't even mention it, man. Thank you for being on. Awesome. All right, bro. All right. Take care, everybody. Enjoy. All Have right. fun. Take it easy, everybody. Salute. Salute. Hmm. Oh, uh, trademark.